What's up, good people? My folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report without you guys. And you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Well, I'm knee deep in painting, getting this stuff together, and I had some thoughts, which is always a scary thing. On my way down the road, I was listening to FX1, Skip, and Shannon Sharp. And yesterday was such an interesting day with so much stuff that happened. You had Frank Clark arrested for weapons charges for the second time in three months. We had a first round draft pick from the Cardinals arrested for reckless driving. And then we had defensive tackle from the Minnesota Vikings shot, literally shot, four times in D.C. Wrong place at the wrong time. And we had defensive lineman Carl Nesbitt came out, which I thought was actually an incredible thing because of the bravery of him being the first active. He's not the only one. And this is where there's a lot of confusion. Michael Sam was drafted uh, knowing that he was um, gay, didn't actually make the roster for the Rams. Cowboys had him in for a while, and he just didn't make it. But Carl Nesbitt is actually going into his sixth season in the NFL, and in the sign of the times, to me, it was really no big deal. And here in lies my issue, and this is with Skip Bayless, because Football is um, sometimes it is a microcosm of society. Things that happen um, in sports can help bring things more forward because we look up to the teams, the players, and things like that. And with that power that they yield, they can bring things quicker as changes than if you and I were to do it. You know, I can go up to a kid and say, stay in school, get your education and stuff. And it goes in one ear and out the other. But if a football player comes up, they're all ears. They're going to listen. They're going to absorb it. And so for him to come out and do that is a great thing that will actually help a lot of people. I love that. You'll remember about this time last year. Well, let, let me go on about Skip. Skip Bayless was all on, you know, he was playing the, you know, I, I worry about him and, and everything else, being the first and everything else. If you'll get ridiculed, he's so brave. It's a wonderful thing. And I'm not disagreeing that it's not a wonderful thing because, you know, he was talking about how to help so many other individuals. You know, it's a great thing. You know, he's literally just all over it that this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So, last year this time, Dak, after losing his brother to suicide, um, having lost his mother a few years before to cancer, going through COVID and the lockdowns, talked about mental health. And basically stating, you know, I deal with depression and mental health and issues and things like that, which helped a lot of people because you look up and say, if Dak Prescott, you know, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, if he's depressed, then there's nothing wrong with me then either, that this is something that others have. And it was a great thing. In fact, you saw other NFL players coalesce around him and admit that, hey, I got these kind of problems too. But here's the rub that I have. Skip Bayless was the one who turned around and was like, I don't know if I want my quarterback, you know, saying that he's depressed. I could see a defensive lineman sacking him and screaming, are you depressed now? Are you going to cry? Uh, yeah, that guy, <clears throat> that guy. All I'm saying is, to me, I equate both of these issues very similar because of the stigmatism of mental health and of course of being in the NFL where it's, you know, macho man, where it's all guys and everything else. Both of them having the courage to come out to me is a wonderful thing. 
but for Skip Bayless to go through and talk about how great it is to one, but vilify the other? Yeah. I, I think I'm right on my, my Skip Bayless talk that he is, in fact, just a jackass. But hey, what do I know? I'm a guy here painting with the day job. I don't make all the bucks that Skip Bayless does to bring you guys the sports news. So what I was saying, guys, is I think it's great when NFL players do things that are beyond just the norm, that they're thinking outside of the box and thinking how they can take their situation um, and help others. Dak Prescott has now done a lot for helping with mental illnesses. When you think about the uh, uh, tennis pro, who was dealing with you know depression and things like that and ended up dropping out of the French Open and others that have come forth basically because of Dak Prescott doing what he did as far as mental health goes he has definitely been a driver for change to help take some of that stigmatism away and in the same way Carl hopefully with Carl him coming out as he said in his um, his uh, Instagram piece he basically said, I hope in the future that, you know, people won't feel a need that they actually have to do this. The fact that I'm coming out and all that, I'm a very private person, but, you know, I felt the need to do this to help others. And both of these two players are going to be the driver that will help so many others. Because the reality is, is you can take, you can take a, a thousand people. And you're going to have all different kinds of people and all different issues and things that they're dealing with, good, bad, ugly, and so on. Well, football, it's a microcosm of that. It's the same thing. If you take that thousand people slice of people, you know, that are right around you right now, that same thing will be the same thing you'll find out with NFL players. So shout out to both of those players out there thinking beyond themselves to do what they can to help others. Because if you want, if you want change in the world, you got to be the change. I can't believe they painted this green. You guys know how much I hate green. Ugh. Green's got to be the ugliest color in the world. Who would do something so hideous? I guess... Eagles would. This green is hideous. This may take three coats of paint to get rid of this green crap. Ugh. I'm Mark Holmes, and we are getting it done. Wish us luck tonight with the zoning for the Red Brick House. That's only in five hours. See you soon.